HVAC systems and components 22. My understanding of bypass factor is that it is a fraction of air that bypasses the coil and then rejoins the airstream on the leaving side. Your initial leaving air calculation uses the full flow, 1000 CFM through the coil. Would this flow not be lower, 90% of full flow, which is then mixed with the unheated bypass air? So for context, this problem was about a steam coil with a bypass factor of 0.1, which is to say has a coil efficiency of 90%, right? Because the coil efficiency and the bypass factors are complements of one another. So your understanding, uh, I think, is correct. Uh, it's the same as mine. I think it's a matter of reconciling that understanding with the way I did this calculation and sort of seeing with the same thing. So let's let's actually draw a picture for this one. I'll use the whiteboard so we don't have any issues. Uh, everybody can see the whiteboard, right? Somebody just give me a thumbs up in the chat or a yes or a good. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, good. Thank you. So we have some air flowing over a steam coil. And basically what you're saying is that 90% of that air continues. It goes over the coil and 10% wraps around the coil, effectively bypassing and is rejoined by the 90% that goes over and 10%. And then at this point, we have to do a mixing calculation. And what's gonna be the result of that mixing calculation? Let me throw some numbers at it. So that entering air, it's a heating coil, it's coming in at 50. And we've determined that if it was a 100% efficient coil, it would go to 76.7 but it's not. So what happens? It goes to, it still goes to 76.7, but it's only 90% of the air. So the other 10% doesn't change at all. It's still 50. And now we've got to do a mixing calculation on that. So how would we do that? We would have to say, uh, well, what was the CFM? A thousand. That's a nice round number to work with. So we would say 900 CFM times 76.7 plus 100 CFM times 50, and then divide that by 1,000. And that turns out to give you the same result as the way I approached it, which was using the coil efficiency formula. Um, and, and don't worry about memorizing formulas here. Just, just kind of try this on and, and see if it makes sense. You have this um, possible delta T supply minus entering. So this is, let's, let's use supply is confusing because it's downstream of the coil. So let's call this the leaving air temperature. We'll call this the entering air temperature and it's heating. So the leaving air temperature is greater. And the potential difference between those two, if it was hundred percent efficient would be the entire 26.7 degree Delta T, right? It would be the leaving air temperature minus the entering air temperature. But the actual leaving air temperature, so this is what's possible. We need a word for that. So I guess we'll say this is like based on 100% coil efficiency. But the actual leaving air temperature based on a 90% coil efficiency, that delta T is going to be 90% of what it could be. And so if we know this enters at 50, and we know that it could leave at 76.6. And we know the coil efficiency is 90%. The only thing we don't know is the leaving air temperature. And it turns out that the leaving air temperature that comes out of this calculation is exactly the same as what you would get if you do this mixing calculation. So your understanding is absolutely correct. And physically, it's a lot more like what really happens because you can actually imagine that 10% of the volume of this air, the mass of this air, is getting past the coil without being impacted. So it's like it's getting by and then mixing. Um, I shouldn't say it's like that, it, it is that. <laughs> but from, um, from a calculation perspective, the, the concept of coil efficiency can be carried out in this manner. And that's perfectly acceptable to think. So, okay, so let's say it sort of one last time and I'm probably belaboring the point if I go any further. <laughs> We're saying all of the air goes 90% 
as far as it could in terms of temperature, in terms of delta T, or 90% of the air goes 100% of the way, and the other 10% goes nowhere, and then they mix. And that's mathematically the same outcome ultimately. And you can do it whichever way kind of makes more sense to you or feels more intuitive to you, or you can do it both ways and check if you have the luxury of time. Hey, Dan. So, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was trying to do the unmute and I was unsuccessful. This is Bill. Hey, Bill. And so when I was looking at that, okay, if if you assume 10% goes around, then your T supply air leaving the coil would be based on 900 CFM times, you know, or, you know 900 CFM and not 1,000. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But so, and then doing... when you, Go ahead. yeah, and so when you mix it all back together, it comes back out at the 76.7. Well, the 900 gets to 76.7, but the uh, the remaining 10%, the last 100 CFM, doesn't get heated at all because it bypassed, and then you have to mix those two streams. Right, but your 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 steam coil was was still I don't know what the uh, BTUs were, but so 90% of the air is going and picking up the heat from that coil, correct? Yeah. So your delta T is going to be larger for the air going through the coil versus. So we're sort of imagining that there's no bypass factor, that the coil is 100% efficient and saying we, we have this known quantity of heat that's being provided by the steam and being used to heat the air. All of the heat from the steam is going to the air. What would the leaving air temperature be? No, no bypass factor. It would be 76.7. Correct. Then we inject this notion of a bypass factor. There's still that much heat uh, available, but because of the bypass factor, we're not making full use of it. But there's less air going through the coil. So the temperature rise of that air will be higher than 76.7. And then when it gets remixed with a 50, it would come right back to 76.7. No, that, I mean, that's what coil efficient, that's what the inefficiency, the losses, the bypass factor is doing. It's making that leaving air temperature not as high as it could be because of the bypass. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. What you're saying is, hey, if all of this heat was going into 90% of the air instead of 100% of the air, it would get hotter. And I agree that would be true, but that's that's the bypass factor is very much not allowing that to ultimately happen. Otherwise, the leaving air temperature would be 76.7 no matter what, where the bypass factor could be 50%, 10%, 90%. Because, I mean, like, if we really want to be extreme just for a thought experiment, imagine only 1% of the air went over the coil. It would be heated tremendously, right? Such that it'll it'll such that after mixing it ultimately still averages out to seventy six point seven, um, kind of a silly extreme to consider, but um, I think it illustrates that it's going to be it's going to be ten percent lower than the delta T that you could have if it was one hundred percent efficient. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm.